This is part two, radicals. Recall from the previous session that exponents are indicators of how many times the number is being multiplied by itself. An example is x squared, which really means x times x, uh, or xx. And p to the third power is p times p times p. A radical undoes an exponent. It finds the factor required to be multiplied by itself to get a number. If 8 squared is 64, then the square root of 64 is 8. If 5 to the third power is 125, then the cube root of 125 is 5. You find square roots by factoring. Um, you find any kind of root by factoring, not just square roots. And factoring, you should look for factors that appear the number of times indicated by the root. Say, for example, you can factor 100 into 2 tenths. You can factor 8 into 2 threes. Sometimes you will see more than one number appear the number of times indicated. When this happens, you multiply the numbers that appear uh, by one another to get your answer. Like, say for example, you're finding the square root of 400. Say we factored 400 into 4 and 100. 4 factors into 2 twos, and 100 factors into 2 tens. So we get uh, 2 and 10, we multiply those together and we get 20. And of course, when we check our answer, 20 times 20 equals 400. Another example of this is 256. 256 can factor into 128 and 2. 128 can factor into 64 and 2, which makes 2 appear twice. Then we can factor 64 into 8 and 8. So we can get 8 that appears twice and 2 that appears twice. 8 times 2 is 16. And 16 squared equals 256. Another example, the cube root of 1,000. 1,000 factors into 110 and 100 factors into 10 and 10. 10 appears three times. The algebra behind radicals is related to the algebra of exponents. Now, um, you have, remember the property, x to the a over b power is equal to the b root of x to the a power. Now, also remember that you can undo a radical by take, raising a radical to the root of the radical, to, to a power that's equal to the root of the radical. So, the a root of x to the a power is equal to x. Um, also, you have the a root of m times the a root of n is equal to the a root of m times n. The, and also, the a root of m divided by the a root of n is equal to the a root of m divided by n. Now, the... Let's, let's check this this out. Um, uh, suppose we have the square root of 8 divided by the square root of 4. That equals the square root of 2. Um, and so when you have, now you remember that old power, when you raise the power to a power, you multiply. Likewise, when you um, find the root of a root, you multiply the roots. Um, so the square root of 16, uh, the square root of the square root of 16 is the fourth root of 16, which is 2. Imaginary numbers. Everything we've gone over in regard to the roots has been the roots of positive numbers. What about negative numbers? Suppose we're looking for some number where the 
square of some number equals negative one. Now, how is that going to happen when the only way you can, um, when you, how is that going to happen? When you, you raise a number that is positive to a square root, I mean, to a second power, you're going to get a positive number, right? Likewise, when you raise a um, negative number to the second power, you're also going to get a positive number. Huh, huh. So it's kind of impossible to uh, get a real number that is going to be a negative number after you square something, right? Absolutely. That's why it's called an imaginary number. So we're going to suppose that there is something out there that is the result of the square root of 1. And we're going to call the square root of 1 i. That's what we're going to suppose the square root of 1 is. So, anytime you take the square root of a negative number, you're going to put an i by the the answer and treat it as if it were a positive number. I means imaginary. You are imagining that there is a such thing as the square root of negative one. So, um, if x squared is equal to four, that means you know x is equal to two. It could be plus or minus two actually. It could be positive or negative two. If x squared is equal to negative four, then x is equal to 2i. So uh, let's look at some of the properties of imaginary numbers. The square root of negative 1 is equal to i. Um, that's so, so i squared is equal to negative 1. And of course, i raised to the cube power is equal to negative 1i. Um, i to the fourth power is equal to 1. i to the fifth power is equal to positive 1i. i to the sixth power is equal to negative 1. And there's a pattern that goes here. Now, an expression that takes the form of a plus bi where um, a is some real number and b is um, bi is like an imaginary number this is what you call a complex number I have it here where it's a um, yeah it's, it's, this is a complex number and any variable that represents a set of complex numbers is called a complex variable We'll talk about that later. 